What's up, Mr. Your Mix? This is the Napoleonic Wars Battle of Wagram, 1809. Let's get right into it. TV History March Collaboration. In May 1809, the Austrians had defeated Napoleon's army in the bloody Battle of Asper. Wow. His enemies took heart. After years of French military dominance, it seemed the tide was turning at mm. last. Three weeks later, Pope Pius VII excommunicated Napoleon for annexing papal land. Another propaganda coup for his enemies. Hmm. But in the wake of its victory, Austria hesitated, not sure whether to seek peace or continue the war. Hmm. While Napoleon responded with a hurricane of activity. Ho, ho, ho. He summoned reinforcements to join him near Vienna. The army of Italy under his stepson Eugène de Beauharnais, and 11th Corps under Marshal Marmont, who'd together driven Archduke John's Austrian army out of North Italy, as well as Marshal Bernadotte's Saxon 9th Corps. Hmm. Wow. Napoleon's army grew from 90,000 to a massive 164,000 men and 544 guns Damn. to take on Charles's army of 128,000 and 414 guns. Wow. Six weeks after his first attempt had ended in defeat, Napoleon ordered his army to cross the river once more. Wow. This time, his engineers had built solid bridges across the Danube mm. to ensure there was no repeat of the disasters of Aspern. Why? For the French army, Napoleon declared, the Danube no longer exists. Mm. The stage was set for the largest battle yet seen in European history. Wow. If you think our Napoleon series has made you a master of tactics. Is that Ragnar Lothbrok? Let's get a go. Who? Is that Mercy from Overwatch? Keep we going. Who? Is that freaking, you know, the other guy from Overwatch? <laughs> the dwarf. <laughs> Alright. Ooh, nice ship. Alright. It's a good job you're not any taller. Huh. Napoleon to a staff officer whose helmet was knocked off by a cannonball. <laughs> right. On the evening of the 4th of July, huh. in heavy rain, the French began crossing from the island of Lobau, not towards the devastated villages of Aspern and Essling, but east towards Gross Enzersdorf, which was soon ablaze from French shells. Damn. Archduke Charles had left only a small advance guard to delay the French. Mm. By dawn, General Massena's 4th Corps and Oudinot's 2nd Corps were driving those troops back, winning space for the French army to deploy. Mm. At 1 p.m., Napoleon was ready to begin his advance across six miles of flat cornfields towards the main Austrian position. Wow. An escarpment known as the Vagram, hmm. 100 meters behind the Rusbach stream. Oh, so the v as General Lasalle's light cavalry and Massena's 4th Corps swung left to guard the flank, Boudinot's 2nd Corps and Davout's 3rd Corps advanced towards the Vagram. Ah. Bernadotte's Saxon Corps and Eugène's Army of Italy filled the center. Hmm. Incredible. At 6 p.m., unsure of the enemy's strength, Napoleon ordered a full-scale assault against the Vagram Plateau. Hmm. They have the high ground. But his troops met determined Austrian resistance along the line. Hmm. By dusk, the Saxon 9th Corps had pushed into the village of Deutsch Vagram. The Saxon infantry wore white uniforms, like the Austrians. And as darkness fell, were mistaken for the enemy. Whoa. Fired on by friendly units. Jeez. The Saxons panicked and fled with heavy losses. Wow. Napoleon's attempt at a quick breakthrough had failed. Huh? That night, both armies slept in the open, while Charles and Napoleon planned their next moves. It's crazy how a uniform can determine things. You know, yeah. Uh... <laughs> what you wear matters here. Crazy. The Battle of Wagram, day two. 
On the second day, Napoleon planned for Davout's Third Corps to lead the attack, rolling up the Austrian flank, while his other corps pinned down the enemy with local attacks. Mm. But to the Emperor's fury, he learned that overnight, without orders, Marshal Bernadotte had withdrawn his battered Saxons from Adakla, which the Austrians now occupied. What? Adakla was a crucial strong point in the center of the battlefield. Napoleon gave orders for its immediate recapture. Jeez. But the French and Saxon attack failed, with heavy losses. Damn. The Austrians had their own problems. The Saxons are... Archduke Charles, knowing he faced a superior enemy, had decided his only chance of victory lay in an all-out dawn attack. Ooh. He was relying on his brother, Archduke John, reaching him with 13,000 reinforcements okay. in time to support the attack on the left. Mm. But by dawn, there was still no sign of him. Jeez. What's more, as 4th Corps began its assault on Grosshofen, on time, 3rd Corps, which had received its orders late, was still getting into position. Ah. Uh holding up the entire Austrian right wing. Crazy. Charles had to tell 4th Corps to abort its unsupported attack until the other corps were ready. Huh. With the Austrians paralyzed by delays, at 10 a.m., Davout began his attack. Ooh. A fierce infantry battle erupted in the village of Markgraf Neusiedl, while in the fields, Dragoons and Hussars fought a giant whirling cavalry battle wow. as each side tried to outflank the other. Huh. Davout's corps took the village, Ooh. though they couldn't stop the Austrians withdrawing to a strong new position on the... Va I, I bet you can't pronounce that. I bet you cannot pronounce that. Agram escarpment. Okay, Agram escarpment. Meanwhile, a serious threat had developed to Napoleon's left flank and rear. Oh, Klinau's sixth corps had driven back the outnumbered French, with some units advancing as far as Essling, wow. dangerously close to Napoleon's vital river crossings. All right. You don't Napoleon want to... urgently needed to reinforce his left flank, but he was also determined to hold back his reserves for a decisive attack. So he ordered Massena's 4th Corps to march across the battlefield mm. and reinforce the left. A huge redeployment like this, right in front of the enemy, was high risk. Yeah. So Marshal Bessier was ordered to lead a cavalry attack straight against the enemy center. Mm. Wow. Casualties were high. Even Marshal Bessier had his horse killed under him Jeez. to the alarm of his men. But the enemy was kept busy, while 4th Corps completed its redeployment and forced Klinau's corps to fall back. Yeah, you don't want to be cut off. You don't want to be cut off. That'd be crazy. Any trooper who isn't dead by 30 is a coward, and I don't anticipate exceeding that length of time. Woo! Wait, wait, this is the LaSalle, the famous LaSalle I heard about. It's like, any Hussar who isn't dead by 30 is a good for nothing. That's freaking crazy. It's such a crazy thing to say, it's bad motivation. <laughs> Napoleon Damn. now assembled a grand battery of more than 80 cannon in the center of the battlefield. <laughs> this was one of Napoleon's trademark tactics, mm. concentration of artillery to blast the enemy line and pave the way for a decisive French attack. Sure. The grand battery fired an estimated 15,000 rounds, mm. setting light to the cornfields. Around 1 p.m., Napoleon ordered a general attack. As Davout continued to batter at the enemy flank, 4th Corps would advance on the left, 2nd Corps on the right. Wow. While in the center, General MacDonald would lead forward 8,000 men of the Army of Italy, hmm. formed up in a giant three-sided square to secure his flanks. Wow. But despite the terrible French cannonade, Austrian 3rd Corps and Grenadiers of the Reserve met the French advance with torrential fire. Woo! MacDonald's giant square was cut to pieces, what? its men mowed down en masse by cannon fire, Jeez. and the attack stalled. But the Austrian army, battered by relentless French attacks, was near breaking point. Every part of the line was under pressure from the French. 
Archduke Charles, determined above all to keep his army intact, ordered a retreat. The Austrian withdrawal was disciplined and well executed. Napoleon had his victory. But his army was also so shattered by fatigue and heavy losses, it was unable to launch any effective pursuit. Right. It's obvious that you were not at Wagram. <laughs> so pull into a minister who mocked the Austrians. <laughs> the Battle of Wagram was a brutal slugging match. The biggest and bloodiest battle yet seen in European history. Mm. French victory came at unprecedented cost. Mm. An estimated 37,500 casualties Jeez. against 41,500 Austrian. Mm. Four days later, French troops caught up with the retreating Austrians at Znaim. Mm. As the fighting escalated, Charles knew he could not withstand the French a second time and asked for a ceasefire. But he had not consulted his older brother, Emperor Francis, who was furious when he heard the news. Not least because long-awaited British support was finally on the way. Three weeks after the Battle of Znaim, the largest amphibious force Britain had ever assembled, 35 ships of the line and 39,000 troops landed at Volcheron Island on the Scheldt estuary. Its aim was to destroy French shipping and naval stores. But following the successful bombardment and capture of Vlissingen, British commanders let the initiative slip from their grasp their force was bottled up by French troops on the marshy Dutch coast, where it was decimated by fever and dysentery. Whoa. About 4,000 died. Many more became permanent invalids. The survivors were evacuated back to England in December. Damn. Emperor Francis, informed of the British debacle and persuaded by his generals that Austria couldn't fight on, made peace with Napoleon. Hmm. In October, Austria signed the Treaty of Schönbrunn, giving up territory to the French Empire, Bavaria, Saxony, the Duchy of Warsaw, ha. and Russia. Jeez. In total, the Austrian Empire was stripped of three and a half million subjects, forced to pay an indemnity, limit its army to 150,000 men, and join Napoleon's continental system which meant ending all trade with British ships and merchants. Wow. Archduke Charles, meanwhile, one of Napoleon's more skilled opponents, had fallen out so bitterly with his brother, Emperor Francis, that he never held active command again. Wow. Napoleon had won another crushing victory, hmm. but there were worrying signs for the French Emperor. His enemies were learning while well, he would increasingly have to rely on young conscripts to fill the gaps left by veterans killed or wounded on campaign. Right. Few could have guessed in 1809, but Napoleon had just fought his last victorious campaign. No way. Can now support him. Make sure to like and subscribe. I hope you enjoy this. That was insane. Woo! Whoa, whoa, whoa.